Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 66, where you email me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will do my best to answer them, because there's no way I'm going to be able to do it on Strange World shows anymore, because the calls are nonstop. Let's just get right to it. First one is called Research Question. Hey, Mark, just spent another endless night watching your channel. I just stumbled on some non-flatter stuff regarding how they make oxygen on the ISS. They claim they use electrolysis from their oxygen generation system, but what I haven't found in my admitted small amount of research is how they supply the 78% of nitrogen per unit of air that we normally breathe. How are they not getting oxygen toxicity and keeling over already. Maybe an interview or short documentary with a specialist would clarify things. Anyways, keep up the good work. Stay flat, Barry from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Thank you for that, Barry. And no, I have no freaking idea. No, the ISS is impossible. If you guys have any doubts, check out uh, the very least the, the two subject matter experts on my testimony show list. One is from industrial valves, uh, specializing in industrial valves and seals engineer. And the other one is a vacuum industrial vacuum specialist so check that out this one is called survival guide go figure mark thank you in advanced really advanced also do you have a schedule where i can listen and call into your live shows and i wrote him back and i said yes all you have to do is go to truthfrequencyradio.com and i am currently on live tuesday nights at 7 pacific 10 eastern or you can wait till the very next day. I post all those shows on YouTube. They're just Strange World. Just type in Mark Sargent Strange World and you'll get uh, a list of everything. But if you want to listen to it live, it's Tuesday nights, 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern. This one's called About Traveling to the Moon. Mark, thanks for all efforts that you did to show the truth. I want to add something about traveling to the moon. Out there, there is no air. Means no oxygen. So how... They got the energy to fly in space. Don't tell me that they used electrical motors to get to the moon in 1968. Thanks again. Have a great day, Miguel. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, there's two, two things you could use. One is what are they pushing off of? One of the laws of physics is you got to push off something. Every action, equal opposite reaction. So if our feet are pushing off the ground when we walk or run, when we swim, our hands and feet are pushing off the water. Even planes with the propellers, even jets, are pushing off the atmosphere. Remember, our atmosphere is not, we can't see it, but it's four parts nitrogen to one part oxygen. It's basically just a thin version of water. So, but if there's nothing in space, what are you pushing off of exactly? All right, this one's called Watch 7, The Most Advanced Robots on YouTube. Hi, Mark. It's Mark from New York, but you already know that. I felt like doing a good old-fashioned email. <laughs> the link I'm sending is to a video about robots. The creator of the video seems to be warning of robots. Go about 4 minutes, 50 seconds. What I happened to find out was a robot made by NASA. They mentioned how awesome it was, but they also slipped in. They would be sending the robot to Mars. I get the feeling they can do CGI with robots. No one's guilt to deal with. No one to leak anything. No big locations or sets. And of course, cheaper. People will believe anything. This was posted a year ago. Probably no one saw it. Thanks for letting me call into the show. I appreciate the time you and your guests spend talking with me and the peanut gallery quotes and of course my fellow callers keep it flat in 2018 you can use that lol that's from zulu one thank you zulu this one's called quote from your last show hey mark suzanne from south korea here again two quick things i love the song you are using now to open your show could i ask the name of it so i can track it down i love it for, but the reason I'm writing on your last, you know what, I should mention that. It's called Londinium, 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 and it's from King Arthur Legend of Swords, I think. But just type in King Arthur Londinium into YouTube and you'll see it out there. It's it's copyrighted, but it's good. It's, it's a wonderful montage song. Anyway, so... Uh, and I'm using that at the beginning of Strange World now. But the reason I'm writing on your last show, you read a quote from, by Isaac Asimov on the importance of science and how it is f the fundamental understanding needed to be successful in life and in any job. And how our assumptions are 
our window to the world. Do you have that quote handy? No, I don't. I might include it in the video I'm currently making on Flat Earth, of course. Sorry to bother. I know you're very busy. Keep up the great work. Love all you that you do. Blessings from afar. Suzanne Borjo. Uh, yep. Yep. I, I one of, got one out of two for that one. I gave you the song, but I do not have that quote anymore. Sorry. I, I go through media pretty quickly. This one's called Harmony. Hi, Mark. Please send us the PDF file you mentioned in Harmony, the throne of God. Thanks for all you do. Kimberly and David Seeley. And I did that. That was the paper that was written uh, and it was discussed briefly during the show where I had an air traffic controller and a flight instructor talking to each other on the same testimony show. And it was great. This one's called Pepper Guide. <laughs> Hi, could you send me a copy, please, Mark? Thanks, Rich. Yes, I was happy to send him a Pepper Guide. Spell check your... Look, it's the title of your email. You don't even have to spell check it. Just, But yeah, I, I poked fun at him. I said, yeah, I'll send you a Pepper Guide. This one's called Starman and Space Some Clouds Pattern. Hi, Mark. Notice that Starman video have same pattern of the clouds for a long period of time and also other problems like instantly disappeared massive clouds. The source of the video is the original channel of SpaceX. Live views of Starman, and you can see that in the video. Here's my link of my folder where I upload pictures that I take from their original video and look, clouds with attention. Also, my video cut where clouds on the reflection of the car disappear. All live feeds on youtube.com are on the loop. Greetings for the good work you done and keep it up. That's from uh, some Russian letters, Metko Netkab. I don't speak Russian, so. This one is, I'd like to speak Russian, but I, I can't. This one's called Treat Others Better Than You Treat Yourself. Hmm, I've heard that somewhere. Mark, love it, live it. In today's world, it's good to know there are a lot of earthlings flat around that care. That's from Randy Harin. And yeah, yeah, thanks for that. I, I that was something I've always, always tried to live by and that is treat others treat others better than you treat yourself which is uh different from an eye for an eye you know do unto others which people normally screw up they they say do unto others as they do unto you it's like no do unto others as you would like them to do unto you and i just changed it i, I just took the, the confusion out of that and i said you know what treat others better than you treat yourself the world would be a better place this one's called Flat Earth Info. Hi, Mark. Sorry about the delay responding to you. Yes, you had already sent it, but I appreciate your thoroughness. I'm trying to digest the information. I keep up with your latest vids because I find your efforts to be one of the most significant endeavors of our age. Flat Earth could truly be in the heart of the matrix that we are in, and there is no doubt that we are in one. The question is, what kind of matrix is it? Why are we so blind to the big picture? Well, because if you know that you're in the matrix, it kind of defeats the purpose. I hope it isn't a Jupiter ascending scenario. No, because it does appear that civilization on Earth is reset on a regular basis. Yes. Keep up the good work, Ron. That's from Ron something. Thank you for that, Ron. Moving on. This one's called God's Throne and Coast to Coast. It's called God's Throne and. Mark, God's Throne and Coast to Coast. Please, my good friend, Charlotte, North Carolina, loving the show and the movement. And yes, I sent that to her and what she's also talking about. Remember, Coast to Coast interviews, I cannot put them up on YouTube because they are real sticklers for copyrights. It's amazing. All the interviews I've done, Coast to Coast is the only one that has struck me for for uh, and for even thinking about it i didn't even put the interviews up i even i just put a trailer I, with no no audio from that interview i just said look if you want coast to coast and their intern i don't know who they hired just cranked up on red bull and meth he's like any anything that says coast to coast i'm just gonna strike whatever uh let's see here hugs not drugs Onboard camera view, launch, and separation of Sentinel-1A. Mark, here's a real classic. Even the European Space Agency did a better job than Tesla at the end of the video. It shows the entire globe in an ice age, LOL. And yeah, that's the, in fact, if I click on it, I'm pretty sure it's called onboard camera. It was made in 2014. It's called onboard camera view, launch and separation of Sentinel. Let's see if I get to the edge of it. And oh yeah, <laughs> the entire world. It's just a block of ice. That's awesome. You guys should you guys should check that out if you get a chance. Seriously, that is um, that's wonderful stuff. Thank you for that. 
This one's called Lionel Nation Talks Flat Earth and SpaceX. And regards Jeff. So let me click on that. I wonder if I watch that. I think it's a pretty big channel. Lionel Lionel Nation. 174,000. Yeah, I gave it a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah, I was glad he got into it. Nice. Thank you. This one's called Clue to FE I Have Not Seen Elsewhere. And it might be a little too long to read. But let's let's read a little part of it. Um, Hi, Mark. Writing from North NSW, Australia. I don't, North Southwest? No, there must be a... I don't know. And after maybe 100 hours of YouTube videos, including many of yours, the spinning globe is a distant memory. Like so many others, I keep looking for new things that can be observed to add weight to the theory and maybe help others navigate and overcome lifetimes of conditioning. So-called centrifugal force is something you can easily experience by spinning some object, tennis ball, billiard ball, on a length of string over your head. You'll feel the tug on your fingers. I set out to find an example of centrifugal I'm so he just abbreviated it to FCF. We'll just do that. That would manifest and hopefully be possible to demonstrate if and only if we lived on a globe spinning a thousand miles an hour at the equator. There are many others out there looking at weight variations at different latitudes, including a guy from Perth in Western, Western Australia using an accurate spring balance with a 500 goal, 500 gram weight. However, what I have seen so far does not really prove much because we are trying to prove a negative, always difficult. And for all we know, the flat earth may itself have slight weight variations at different locations. Given that we know pretty much nothing about gravity, how it works, if it exists, etc. However, we can observe that things have weight or a force that makes them fall. So the largest, heaviest machines we can look at that can move fast are our aircraft like the Boeing 747-100. The calculations below show pretty clearly that a fully laden 747 flying with the alleged spin of the earth easterly should be about 2.5 metric tons lighter than the same 747 flying against the alleged spin westerly. Brian Mullen did a video about the aircraft and the spin, but this is a completely different concept. I ignored the height of the flights, five or six miles added to the earth's radius, and maybe other factors that would complicate the calculations without making any significant difference. So how could this be detected? And would the absence of this effect uh, proving a negative be of any real use as a real clue? Although I guess the absence of a curve is in a similar category. Interesting, interesting. Huh, uh, I'm not gonna read the rest of it, but an interesting thought, and I'll, I will look into it a little bit. You're right. Nobody has brought that up. Hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. The, and by the way, I'm pretty much over my cough. I know my voice might sound a little different because I had been coughing for the last week. So now I'm drinking Gatorade, just did the treadmill and uh, getting back into it. This one's called My Awakening Reality. Hello, Mark. Thank you for the reply. Okay, here we go. First and foremost, how do I best strike up the conversation with my family, especially my wife? You don't. Second, just prior to my awakening, I've embraced the whole Nibiru concept. Now that my understanding of outer space is in, con in conflict to the dome, is any of it truth? No. If anyone says Nibiru's in the sky, it's just going to be part of a light show. And it may be a very convincing light show, but there's no. no. I, I followed Nibiru back in 2011, 2012. It's 2018. Nibiru is is not what you think it is. Third, aliens and abduction. In inductions? <laughs> Should have said abductions, but that's okay. Spell checker. I've always thought that ancient man described what they've seen in their way, little green men or angels. Uh, I believe in aliens. I just don't think that they're from other planets. I think they're just old versions of us. Fourth, yellowish glass in Africa that could be pieces of the dome. Has that been perused? Eh, I don't know if it's pieces of the dome. I don't know. Fifth, at last, as a collective, can we do more to put pressure on the world-famous Photoshopped Earth? Already doing it, been doing it, been doing a great job. I do apologize for having so many questions. Would be grateful for any knowledge you can share with me. Thank you and God bless you. Look, I know you've got questions. That's why I said do your own research and ask questions. There's a lot of answers out there. Just type flat earth into YouTube and start going through the list. There's a whole bunch of videos, but be specific. So if you want, I mean, we've covered a lot of different topics. So if you want the sun, type in flat earth and sun or flat earth meteors, flat earth tides, flat earth moon, it goes on and on. Just get, get specific. 
This one's called Rivers Prove the Earth is Flat. Mark, greetings from a fellow Flat Earth believer. I've been researching the Flat Earth for about three months. I've watched hundreds of vids on YouTube and don't recall this subject being addressed. If you look at the Mississippi River from Minneapolis, Minnesota to New Orleans, the distance is approximately 1,222 miles, Google Earth. Minneapolis has an elevation of 1,376 feet above sea level. New Orleans is at, or New Orleans, is at sea level. If my math is correct, the average slope of the Mississippi is 1.12 feet per mile, which is what you would expect on a flat Earth. Using a curvature calculator, we find approximately 187 miles of curvature for 1200 miles this would be a slope of 808 feet per mile as you can see this would be a disaster of monumental proportions for the city of new orleans you find the most identical results i'm sorry almost identical results if you research the nile river in africa the white nile and the blue nile rivers converge at Khartoum, Sudan, to form the Nile River. The Nile flows from south to north to Cairo, Egypt, where it enters the Mediterranean Sea. Khartoum is 1,264 feet above sea level, and the distance to Cairo is approximately 1,006 miles, which gives an average slope of 1.25 feet per mile, which again is what you would expect on a flat Earth. The curvature from 1,006 miles is 127 or 671 671,000 feet. This would be an average slope of 667 feet per mile. Cairo would be washed away, which would be sad because I know some people in Cairo. Please check my math. Hope this helps. Sincerely, Joe Waddle. Great last name, Waddle. This one's called Turkey to Upgrade Its Status in the Antarctic Treaty. Please don't identify me. See? Good. Could you put that up right off the bat? Hi, Mark. Saw this and thought of you. It's an article from February of this year. Uh, Turkey deploys scientists to Antarctic, Antarctica to upgrade status in treaty conduct research. Hmm. Uh, Turkey is set to deploy a large team of scientists to Antarctica, the world's fifth largest continent, to assess the feasibility of establishing a scientific base in order to meet the criteria needed to upgrade its status from non-consultive to consultative party. No, oh, so they're just trying to upgrade their status. It's still inside the treaty, though. Wonder what they are doing down there. Lots of energy resources, apparently. Love you and love your show. Love from the UK. There's a lot of love coming from Emily. I didn't say your last name, though, Emily. It's okay. I didn't give you your email address out either. So, uh, Let's see here. YouTube. That's what it's called. Hi, Mark. Thanks for the stats update. Let the games begin. Cheers. Uh, how do you pronounce this name? E I K E G. Ikig. Ikig. Okay. This one's called New Mirage Footage on Local Chicago Area News. Meteorologist mentions Flat Earth. Mark, check out this local weather post. Look at the comment from the meteorologist. Hope you see this email. Okay, I'll check it out. This one's called Slideshow. Hi, Mark. I have done a Photoshop coloring of the classic 19th century Flammarion engraving attached you might like for one of your slideshows. Also available at rflatearth.com. If you would like a hard copy for yourself, just let me know. Best wishes, G. Peter Gardner. And I think I asked him for a hard copy. Didn't I send a thing to him? I, I got the soft copy, but I said, yeah, I'd love a hard copy of, of that. So, if, Peter, if you're listening at rflatearth.com, yeah, send me one. Love, I'd hang it up immediately. I love the Flammarion. I, th I think it's fantastic. This one's called Apollo Hoax. Hi, Mark. Have a look at some of my stuff at aulis.com slash photo studies. My first interview. Need to get better at it. Let me click on the interview. That's in YouTube. It's YouTube. It's called Haunted Voices Radio Guests Marcus Allen and Scott Henderson. And the reason why I missed it is there's no flat earth in the title. So uh, it's from Joe Sturgis. He did it on October 25th, 2017. There's literally no comments in here. It's got 464 views. That's weird. Hmm. All right. Don't worry. It takes a little while to, to get good at interviews. I mean, it's really just practice. It's muscle memory. And then know your material. That's, you know, get it to where there's a reason why military drills and drills and drills and drills. So you can do it no matter what the situation. You can, you know, you, you reflex and, and you can rattle off stuff as, as fast as they can and throw questions out at you. Moving on. This one's called Yuri Gagarin. Hi, Mark. Was checking 
on the life of the supposedly first man in space. On April 12th, 1961, Gagarin became both the, both the first human in tr to travel into space and the first to orbit the Earth, been in space for one hour, 48 minutes. After this, he became the poster boy for the Soviet space program because he became a heavy drinker and was not allowed basically to to fly again for fear he might have an accident you might think that after this supposed accomplishment he would have done anything to get back up there but this never happened now i have found some interesting is the mystery surrounding his death on march 27th 1968 literal a little over a year before apollo 11 while on a routine training flight from uh shakovsky air base he and flight instructor vladimir Siryogin died in a MiG-15 crash near the town of Kurzach. Here's some theories. The cause of the crash that killed Gagarin is not entirely certain and has been subject to speculation about conspiracy theories over the ensuing decades. Soviet documents declassified in March 2003 show that the KGB had conducted their own investigation of the accident in addition to one government and two military investigations, basically blaming the act actions of airbase personnel contributed to the crash. The report states that an air traffic controller provided Gagarin with outdated weather information and by the time of his flight, conditions had deteriorated significantly. <clears throat> yeah, really? Weather conditions? Ground crew also left external fuel tanks attached to the aircraft. Gagarin's planned flight activities needed clear weather and no outboard tanks. Why would that matter? Gagarin's aircraft entered a spin either due to a bird strike or because of sudden move to avoid another aircraft. Uh, it goes on and on. But the question is, why did he die? What did he know? Interesting. The uh, The last paragraph says, those documents revealed that the commission's original conclusion was that Gagarin or Sirogin, Sir, Sirogin had maneuver, maneuvered sharply either to avoid a weather balloon leading the jet into a supercritical flight regime and to its stalling in complex meteorological conditions and, or to avoid entry into this upper limit of the first layer of cloud cover. Just found the story suspiciously interesting. Pretty sure he knew we could not get out of here. Take care. And that was from Yuri. No, from Lewis. <laughs> wow. Okay, this one's called Sun on the Right. Hey, Mark... Just a quick note about the position of the sun when sailing in the southern waters. I was reading an account of Pharaoh Necho II's supposed trip around the southern tip of Africa was reported by the historian Herod Herodotus. Excerpt from the article. Herodotus finished the story with a surprising conclusion. The Phoenicians made a statement which I myself do not believe, though others may, if they wish, to the effect that they sailed west around the southern end of Africa... They had the sun on their right. This is exactly what they would have been seen going west around the Cape of Good Hope at the southern tip of Africa because the sun appears to the right when traveling westward in the southern hemisphere. But how could Herodotus have known this at such an early date if the journey did not take place? You can find the rest of this post at Neko 2's African Circumnavigation. Interesting that history supports the position of the sun as on the right side when navigating southern waters. Support for flat earth? Question mark. And that's from Gina in Texas. Thank you, Gina. This one's called Your Contribution on YouTube. Dear Mark, I've seen your contribution on YouTube. My knowledge of English is not brilliant, so I do not even understand everything. I accept the call for a common awakening. Would you please, can you send me a draft text in which I invite people with mailing lists and religious political leaders in the country of Slovenia about the things you sub subscribe, describe. I'll help with the compiler for the translation. Thank you for draft. Oh, the draft text. Thank you for your great contribution to improving the world. Sincerely, Marjan. Oh, so she needs the, I don't think I wrote back to her. I did not. So that goes in my things to do pile. And I'm just going to send her the transcripts for uh, the Flat Earth Clues. This one's called My Second Flat Earth Video from Suzanne in South Korea. Hey, Mark. Well, it's past midnight here on my end, but I wanted to share my second Flat Earth video. It's actually only 25 minutes long, though it shows that it's over an hour. I don't know why, but don't freak out. It's not that long. 
I spent a good two weeks and over 48 hours putting it together. The pictures, videos, music, voiceover, since I'm not very tech-savvy. So if you have time, I hope you will watch. But I know you're swamped with interviews, hangouts, and making your own YouTubes. So if you don't have time, no worries. Just wanted to share. Doing what I can to spread the truth. Enjoy. Take care and blessings. Keeping it flat. Uh, Suzanne B. from South Korea. Let me click on it. Hopefully, I'd already thumbed it up. Yep, I did. And hopefully, I made a comment. Oh, no, because she said comments are disabled for this video. But I did thumb it up, and I did subscribe to her channel. And her, her channel's called Suzanne Borho, B-O-R-H-O. And thank you for uh, for doing that. And, yeah, she, she didn't edit the back end. So the video ends at 25 minutes, and it's just a black screen for <laughs> another, another hour. That's okay. No worries. We all have to go through our learning process. This one's called Molten Rock. Hi, Mark. I watched some of your videos. I have to be honest, when watching Flat Earth Clues and you were talking about the Molten Rock, I couldn't figure out if you were serious about man, man creating the illusion of increasing heat as you dig... No, man didn't do that. As you dig, dig deep, or was it just illustrating that you can't dig beyond eight miles? Yes, that's exactly what I was saying. Due to increasing temperatures. Deepest hole. Every dog. Guys listening to this for the first time is eight miles, 12 kilometers. Would you be kind enough to explain? Also, I once saw a video explaining the different pages pages of the moon phases not pages and how that works in the flat earth do you happen to have a link to a video my son was questioning it and that video was a great illustration thank you ed morrow i will contact him this one's called survival guide from snafu radio mark i would like to get a copy of your survival guide keep posting was just listening to q a 61 that's from cody at snafu radio yep i sent it to him this one's called Coast to Coast Interview, please. Mark, please send me the Coast to Coast AM interview. I watch your videos and listen to the TFR radio show weekly. Keep on fighting. Thanks, Matt Hutchins. So, yep, sent him the Coast to Coast interviews. This one's called Turkish Prison. <laughs> Mark, have you ever spent time in a Turkish prison? Thanks, Scott. And that is a movie reference. You guys want to have fun? Send me movie references like that. And I will absolutely. That is, that is from Airplane. Oh, boy. 1980, I believe. There was Airplane and Airplane 2. I actually liked Airplane 2 more than, than Airplane. Because uh, Shatner stole the show, in, in my my opinion. But uh, that was the pilot who was asking just these weird questions to this little kid. He's going, you ever spend time in a Turkish prison? You ever like watch movies about gladiators? You know, just really great, really great uh, comments. So thank you for that. That's from Scott. And that's why I responded to him back. I said, you know, like movies about gladiators. That's literally what I wrote back to him. This one's called The Usual. Hi, Mark. It's Barbara from Arizona and now from California. Just wanted to say hello and ple please keep up the amazing work as always. Your devotion to the truth is very much appreciated to many, many people. Thank you for your time and I wish you the best of everything. Respectfully, Barbara, California. This one's called Survival Guide. Don't know why I get louder when I say that. I'm just excited that people want the survival guide. It's called Mark. I will print it out when I get it. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Mark Wontraba. He's cool because he is, his name is also Mark. This one's called Beer on a Balloon. Boy, that's the first time I think I've ever seen that in the title. Hey, Mark, just thought you might find this interesting. I wish uh, it would have been higher just to see the temperature keep rising, but maybe someone else... We'll try it with a better balloon sometime. Keep up the fight, Marty. Flat out. And it's literally called First Cores Light in Space. Testing the super cold label. Oh, yeah. Negative 75 Fahrenheit and 93,000 feet. Does it work? Yeah. Yeah. The temp it does. It. That's, that's not a big shock. It gets colder as you get up there. Much, much colder. And I mean, to the point, people don't understand if you, if something happened to your plane, like even 40,000 feet, you would freeze to death long before you, uh, you hit the ground or, or, or you, you black out because of lack of oxygen as well. This one's called your flat earth video. Mark, I just finished watching your video and is definitely food for thought. My question is about Admiral Byrd. I have read several articles about him over the years and was fascinated by this diary regarding the, his experiences in hollow earth, meeting the Agarthans and his theory about the poles. 
or convex rather than concave. Please explain how his discovery ties into the flat earth theory. If it does, I have discovered how we, the people, have been lied to or just about everything. At the top of the long list is the government, and your list is probably longer than mine since I recently heard about flat earth. I'd love to hear back from you, Marilyn. Cool. You know what? I'll write you back, Marilyn. And there's a lot of stuff about Admiral Byrne. This one's called My Awakening Reality. Hi, Mark. It has come to my attention that researching information in my new endeavors to achieve truth is a bitch. So much disinformation. Now I know where the Masons got it. Speaking of which, I've noticed that so many who know about Masons are wrong. A one-time fraternity for good and creator has become convoluted, redirected into a total abomination. I certainly do not subscribe in what it has become. Those with tinfoil hats at lower levels seem to be the loudest voices and feel they know everything. Having said that, the irony is that the once tool used by Freemasons of misdirection and misinformation has become their own demise. I don't know your view on this, but if you ever had a question about this subject, question mark, uh, have, Anyway, perhaps I can be of assistance. I do not claim to be an authority, but you may be surprised. I've learned a lot from you. I'm sure so have others. I pray you never stop what you do. We are such the minority. Thanks, Ray. Very welcome, Ray. And what was the question? Have you ever... Ever to, I, I look. I, the, I don't really want to get into the, the Freemasons too much, only that if you're really interested... In what it, I think it's tied to the flat earth. Look up the five tracing boards. There's only five. And if you look at them close enough. It shows you the entrance to this world. The frequently asked questions. The achievement screen. How you exit. What happens when you die. Uh, and all in five screens. A lot of symbolism. But it's there if you look. This one's called Flatter Globe. Hello, Mark. Anthony here from the Philippines. Just wanted to ask if we're in a closed dome. Does our oxygen percentage drop yearly because of the overpopulation pollution and destroying our forests. No, the system tries to compensate for that. Uh, we're not going to run out of oxygen, but the pollution and the heat is going to, the, the system seems to be trying to compensate for that. And the weather systems, uh, I believe in climate change. There's weird weather everywhere. And, uh, and it is getting warmer. I will say that. I mean, you, look, you're going to burn every car engine is just a furnace. People forget that. It's like, look, it, you're literally just burning gasoline. It's no different than a furnace in your house, but you're running them really, really hot. And there's billions of them running all the time. And even though it's a vast, vast, vast world in terms of, you know, even it's an enclosed pressurized system, I mean, we're talking about so many millions of acres of, 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 um, of atmosphere, it's still going to affect it over, well, let's say 100 years. It's only time. Don't get the idea I'm a globy, but just wanted to, wanted to ask some questions from time to time. Thanks, more power to your show. So that's my answer. And that's from Via Motors, <laughs> using a company account to, to write me. This one's called Antarctica 24-Hour Sunshine. G'day, Mark. I'm a long-term three-year believer and supporter of the Flat Earth model, but came across the question from a colleague the other night and couldn't give him the answer he was happy with. If the ice is the perimeter wall, how does it happen when that they can experience 24-hour daylight in one point there if the sun is calculating? Yeah, I know. I saw the YouTube video on the subject that used a rotating camera on a tripod. Maybe you viewed it too. I believe it may have been taken at the Mawson camp. I'd love to know your thoughts, and I'm so excited to be the only guy in my workplace who is a believer slash lunatic. It's kind of a reverse honor for me, but it's comforting to know that someday all these indoctrinates, as I call them, will all have to eat their words and proclaim me as a visionary. Lo yours in flatness, Sean, West Coast, Australia. And... Yeah, uh, if you're going to look that up, just look up Flat Earth Sun, uh, Flat Earth 24-Hour Sun, and you'll find some great stuff by Jaren and Glowbusters and DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. Look at those. This one's called Survival Guide. Hi, Mark. Just want to say thank you. Now my eyes are wide open. Keep up the good work, please. If I can have your Survival Guide and Coast to Coast, that would be great. Thank you, Martin from UK. And I sent Martin both of those. This one's called No Subject. Dear Mark, in recent days, I've become extremely interested in Flat Earth. Metabunk has discussions about Flat Earth, and they invariably involve long discussions with extremely complex math, which always find flaws in observed flatness. 
it would seem that for every observed flat confirmation, they have a complex reason for debunking and observation. Lasers are deflected by thermal situations. No one can agree on methods for accurate laser experiments, mirages. Observation from 35,000 feet isn't high enough, and even 90,000 feet isn't high enough to see the subtle curvature the Earth has. It would seem that without credible visual confirmation from deep space or credible exploration to the Antarctic, we are going to have a hard time providing absolute proof. I sense that this very fact is why the powers that be have little to fear. I've already seen what the subject does to relationships. I've already felt the silent reaction most of my friends have to my discussions. Most will humor me with their time, but I come away with the feeling that they will do their best to distance themselves from having to listen to me again. The one bit of evidence I fall back to is the Copernican assumptions of us being on a sphere and a total lack of evidence from the globalist defenders. Thanks for letting me vent. Please know that I'm completely in your camp. I look forward to the continued discussions. Regards, Fred Koch. Welcome, Fred. Good stuff. This one's called, Did We Really Walk on the Moon 48 Years Ago? On the very first attempt video, 48 years ago, I think it was 49 years ago, because the 50th anniversary is going to be next year. Hey, Mark, I know you already know all of this, but it was a good article. Please read. I'm from Colorado Springs and 1.5 year flat earther, 19.3 years military and so ready to move forward. Feel kind of trapped working in the government. My kids are awesome and always question their teachers whenever space or the globe is brought up in class. I've never felt so awake in the last eight years. It's amazing how many people are asleep and okay with all the lies that they believe in. I almost didn't read the article attached because I felt I knew it all. As we know, we check our ego at the door and learn what God has for us. Thanks, Mark, and keep up. Keep it flat, brother. LOL, my seven-year-old son had to teach his 59-year-old teacher about chemtrails in science class when learning about clouds. Son asked, how do you explain fake clouds? Teacher said, what do you mean? My son said, look outside the window right now. The clouds behind the planes are fake clouds. Screamed out loud, chemtrails. <laughs> wow. Nice. It's good. This one's called Flat Earth Support. Hi, Mark. My name is Dave Reese, and I live in upstate New York. My 29-year-old son, Jason, turned me on to the Flat Earth almost a year ago. I'm 59. I'm well indoctrinated until I opened my mind and began following my son's Instagram. He has 45,000 followers and growing rapidly. I n now cannot believe that we've been so brainwashed. I continue to learn about Flat Earth on a daily basis. He speaks very highly of you when we get together and talk Flat Earthy. Talk flat earth. He is incredibly educated on the subject. Is it possible you can drop him a line personally? This is totally on the up and up. Uh, to get an encouraging email from you directly would be so rewarding to him for all the hard work he's put up thus far. I really appreciate it personally. Thank you so much. His email is, and he sent me his email. It's shred pow 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 all day 88. Oh, shred powder all day. He must be a skier. And I did. I contacted him. I said, thank you for that. And great that he's got 40-something thousand people on Instagram. That's awesome. This one's called Dude Perfect Highlights Flat Earth. Watch football versus soccer trick shots. Dude Perfect. Mark, Dude Perfect has 27 million subs. They just put the flat earth twice on the video. Check this at 2 minutes and 13 seconds. And don't forget Jeremiah 717. That's from Ted. And yeah, the it was interesting. In fact, I'm going to click on the link real quick. Those I hadn't heard of Dude Perfect. It's one of those big YouTube channels that's a little too young for me. And uh, this video has 21, wow, if it's real, 21 million views. That's a lot. That's the most views. It's football versus soccer trick shots. Dude Perfect. So good for them. And... Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I commented, yep, the globe is dead, long live flat earth. And it's got 60-something thousand comments. So, hey, any exposure, love it. Thank you for that. This one's called Important. Mark, first of all, I'm a huge fan. I just finished watching a Dude Perfect video. <laughs> nice. They brought up flat earth and realized this stuff is really spreading fast. Then I went to the comments and they said, comment Flat Earth if you see this. So I started going through the comments. There were so many Flat Earth comments. Just wanted to let you know that we have more Flat Earth promoters out there. Sincerely, unanimous. <laughs> awesome. That's really, really great. Yeah, again, and we don't solicit these people. They just find it on their own. It's that 
guilty secret pleasure out there, not just the U.S. This one's called 2015 Video. Mark, I just saw the video you published back in 2015. My question is, so is have you continued your research on the subject and are your beliefs still the same in regards to it? Oh, please tell me I responded. Yes, I did. I already sent him a thing. Said Anyone that says that, I immediately send him a thing to my main channel. I said, yep, been doing a few things. Up to like 1,100 Flat Earth videos now. I mean, quite a few of them are promos, sure, but a lot of them aren't. I mean, this is the 66th Q&A, uh, 150, 160 interviews, uh, 70 shows with Patricia, a whole way of the clues, and what was the other things I had a lot of? Oh, Strange World episodes, yeah. Yeah, a lot of those too. Uh, this one's called Staying Flat in Arkansas. Uh, Mark, please use my first name only. As of April 2015, after listening to your Flat Earth Clues videos, along with Eric Dubay's, Matt Boylan's, Rob Skiba's, I begrudgingly changed my long-held paradigm of a spinning spherical Earth set in an endless universe to that of a flat, still-domed, snow-globe-like realm on which our creator... Yahweh and his son Jesus Christ reside in the heaven he created above us. In fact, after reading Rob's Testing the Globe website, that's yeah, a big website, I feel quite ashamed for not having taken the Bible literally in the first place. And you should. No, no Rob was really gentle with that. I am still remain curious as to why this reality has been let loose on such a dumbed-down society as this particular moment in history, but not enough to make me doubt the flat, still-domed reality of it all. Having already been a Christian, this just strengthens my face and, re and reveals the trickery of Satan and his thus far successful mock mockery of God and his glorious creation. I now see, through Satan's lies intended to hide God and, as Marty Leeds put it, his attempt to materialize the spiritual realm, thus causing millions to think they have good reason to God's very to doubt God's very existence. Thank you for having the guts to push on after taking on your recruiter gateway drug role without a single soul willing or in fact able to debate you on the subject. Yeah, it's true. Nobody will debate me. I feel like the the first Highlander movie where he's standing in the middle of that that the Scottish clan battle like with a sword and people are running around him. Nobody's going to engage him. And then, you know, Kurgan comes after him, but that's a whole other thing. Uh, of course, I listened to your debates with Stanton Friedman and Mark D'Antonio, neither of which were debates, of course. I doubt that you will ever find anyone who will debate you who can fulfill your requirements as they'll never be able to gather enough ball earth clues to support their position. I often wonder how many overeducated people in any of the fields which deal with the alleged curvature of the earth are secretly freaking out and scrambling to hang on to their fake heliocentric globe as a result of having been made aware of the reality of the flat earth. I'm sure there are thousands. Please send me copies. Oh, you're kidding me. At the very end, uh, it's, this is a rookie mistake. Please send me copies of both your Coast to Coast interviews as well as your survival guide, which I will promptly print out in triplicate. Thanks again and stay flat, Leon. Uh, and I didn't write him back, so he absolutely didn't. Uh, so i got to send that. After. Now I've got more homework. That's fine. Meanwhile, this guy, this is who you should learn from, Leon. This guy, opening title, survival guide, copy please. Hi, Mark. I would love a copy of your survival guide in case I didn't see it in the title. We need to pray for peace. <clears throat> Be prepared for war. Keep up the good work challenging the system. Love your subject matter expert series of interviews and discussions. Mark Kozak. He's from Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. This one's called Urgent Jacksonville Meetup, February 24th. That would be yesterday. We are having our second Flat Earth Meetup this month. I actually posted a video on my YouTube channel. Yep, and I already wrote back to him. So you guys can send me stuff last minute if you want. I'm not going to guarantee I can get a promo out last minute. But he sent it. He sent that on the 20th. and I, I had four days. But uh, and I will do the promo for you like I did him. This one's called Birds, Flyaway Routes, and Satellite Signals Over Europe. Hi, Mark. I found two interesting things by looking at non-flat Earth material. First is the route of the birds. If you look at the attached image, you will see the flight path of the birds. They have no problem going straight across the alleged North Pole, but there is not a single bird flying across the South. If you type into Google Bird Fly Routes, you will see more images. The other point is a satellite coverage over Earth. Uh, Europe. The question is, how can anyone explain this coverage if the Astra satellites, that's ASTRA, 
operate in the geostationary orbit some 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's equator. If you look at the center of the broadcast, it looks like it's located in the high altitude mountains in the Alps. If you carefully observe the coverage compared with the landscape, you can see how the mountains blocking the route of the signals. I've attached a little video. I hope you can see my point. Though the video not brilliantly done and aligning of the two maps was impossible. What do you think? All the best, Lewis. Yeah, yeah, he's absolutely right. The uh, the bird stuff was fascinating. Looking bird flying routes. Put that on a on a Mercator map and then put it on a bend it around to a um, uh, as a muffle map and it works great. So love it. This one's called. Oh, that was the Navy guy, retired Navy chief, quartermaster. Sorry, that was just my thing. Subject matter expert. Follow up email. I'm not perfect. You know, I do mess up a little email here and there. This one's called The Missing Ingredient. Hi, Mark. This is Andrew. I don't believe the earth is round or flat because I've never seen it, so I'm awake now, but I want to be part of this. I have what is missing from the flat earth model. You need a super conductor it will hover and circle navigate around the north pole mercury proven to hover and circle navigate its magnetic force this is why moonlight is cold i'm not sure but the sun is probably a hot superconductor i'm sure i have your attention call me in canada hmm well andrew if you're listening send me more stuff because i get a lot of phone calls in fact i've had three phone calls since i've started this and one of them left a, me left a message this one's called Lexicon. Mark, wow, watched Capricorn 1 last weekend again. That's a movie, by the way. I highly recommend it. If anyone has not watched Capricorn 1, late 70s movie, uh, uh, James Brolin, O.J. Simpson, uh, fantastic cast uh, in there. Really check it out if you get a chance. Independent film about how the United States faked a Mars mission. Really, really interesting. I remember that movie coming out, saw it when it did, but had forgotten a lot of the stuff. Actually, I'm sure a lot of the stuff didn't even register with me way back when, but the older, wiser me saw the stuff that just blew me away. Had a pleasant surprise mid-January. I'm blessed with six kids, all well-adjusted, driven and smart. I brought up the flat earth to one a while back and the typical reaction. So you don't believe that the earth is flat, do you, dad? Fast forward to my visit to Everett in January. That's really close to where I am. One of my oldest daughter's house where most of us congregated for a couple days. I was up late with my partner, daughter, and son-in-law, and we were just talking all sorts of subjects, having a few nightcaps. I was determined on this visit to approach Flat Earth with them, as son-in-law Jason really reminds me of Rob Skiba, and as a bonus, is one of the smartest people I know. Very, very intelligent. I had agonized over how to approach it, and somewhere in the conversation, something was mentioned about curvature or globe, and he looked directly at me and said calmly, there's no curve, the earth is flat. Really? Uh, wow, well, just the floodgates were wide open then. We spent at least a couple hours discussing different aspects of the flat earth and things we'd learned from you and others that make complete sense to the open mind. Later, one of my boys was talking about some of uh, his friends. Can you believe they actually think the earth is flat? He asked incredul incredulously. I don't use that word much. I managed to keep quiet but glanced at my daughter, Julia, and we shared a conspiratorial smile. We know they'll eventually join the fold or not. Best regards, keep up the most excellent work, and I'm still holding you to a beverage when I get up there again. Steve from Vancouver, Washington. Yeah, Vancouver, Washington. My uncle uh, taught high school down at Longview uh, Football, down at um, uh, Longview Kessel for a bunch of years. Okay, this one's called South Africa. We got time for a few more. Uh, hi, Mark. Trust you are well. It's an absolute honor and pleasure for me to contact you all the way here from South Africa. I am a very recent convert to the Flat Earth model and I'm very excited by it all. I just listened to your YouTube video with the South African radio station and was wondering if it is done locally. Uh, I think it was. Uh, I wasn't there, though. Uh, if you are by... Oh, oh, he was wondering if I was there. If you are by any remote chance on this side of the world, I would love to meet up. I live in Cape Town. Regardless, I want to cheer you on and encourage you to continue the cause. Know you have a supporter and friend in South Africa, and you are welcome to come visit and stay with us if you require accommodation in this side of the world. I happen to hold a master's degree in nuclear engineering, so that throws some weight behind my punches when I debate with friends and colleagues about this true shape of the earth and all the Einstein nonsense, and all by the grace of God. Pop me a WhatsApp call if I can be of any assistance here in the Southern Hemisphere on 
blah, blah, blah. Perhaps I can check the moon tide cor correlation out or whatever. Or like I said, if by a long shot you are in the area, we can meet up all the best and God bless you, Freddy. Thank you, Freddy. This one's called U2 Aircraft and My Flat Earth Picks from Alaskan Mountain. Uh, Mark, how's it going? I am currently listening to your video, Strange World 43. Great video, by the way. And you three were talking about the U2 SR-71 Blackbird and such. You mentioned that you believe the U2 had been scrapped. Just wanted to let you know it's alive and well. We still use it. And one up here in Alaska at the base I'm stationed at. Can't confirm which one, but once it landed, they pulled it into a certain hangar and had cops outside the hangar. I ended up having to do some work on a different aircraft in the same hangar, so I got to see one up close. Pretty cool. Also, since I'm emailing you and this off topic, I figure I can send you some pictures of my latest snowboarding trip. Why is it important? Because from where I sit, I could see Mount Denali. Denali? which was 135 miles away. I also have the coordinates of where I was standing and Mount Denali. Rendezvous Peak, Alaska, and he gave me the coordinates there. Mount Denali is 20,000 feet tall, and I was 3,900 feet up. I used a couple of different websites for calculating. At 39 feet up, there should be more than 2,000 feet of the mountain missing, and you can see the entire mountain. Mind you, it's not the greatest camera since I took it from my phone, but if you zoom in, you can clearly see the mountain all the way down to its base. Also, if you Google, Google search Denali from Anchorage, you can see almost the entire mountain and with Anchorage at rather close to sea level more than half of Denali should be hidden by Earth curvature. I can send you a video I took from up there as well if you would like. Earth sure is flat and I love it. Well, God bless and take care, Brian. Very welcome, Brian. Time for how many more? How many more? Not very many. Uh, this one's called watch. We'll do two more watch live Starman driving in space after successful heavy Falcon launch SpaceX real time updates on YouTube. Well, this will not be the last one because I'm not going to end on a SpaceX thing. Mark SpaceX live feed in space in this replay of it. Check out the last four minutes of the car in space. Are those supposed to be a whole bunch of stars zooming by in different speeds or am I seeing air bubbles filmed in NASA pool studio? Cheers, Mark. Uh, I don't know where they filmed it, but it definitely wasn't up in space. This one's called uh, Vacuum and Atmospheric Diving Suit. Maybe we'll end on this one. Hi, Mark. I'm sure you have tons of email to read, so here's one more. <laughs> nice. I'm a big fan of your work. I was listening to the other day to the interview you had with the industrial vacuum expert, and I have to tell you, we all know that vacuum is but what a vacuum is. But until this moment, I wasn't realizing the power of it. I'm sure people didn't either, because if they do, there will be no more questions regarding space. It's all... No, it's a lie. I might be very wrong, but if a spacesuit can withstand nine tour condition in space, a deep sea exploration environment should be a piece of cake, don't you think? NASA used them in a pool, but I'm wondering if anybody tried it in deep waters and saw what happens. I'm sure for people, vacuum is just lack of air and nothing else after listening to this interview. Uh, this is my number one reason against the space BS. Thank you. That's from Emil. You know what? Let's do one more. It's good though, by the way. I love the vacuum of space. This one's called, thank you for taking my call. Mark, thank you for your patience tonight. I neglected to mention how greatly I've enjoyed the slideshows you include with your YouTube audio uploads. I have often paused the audio just to absorb a particular slide. Thank you again. Tim Patton from Houston, Texas. You know what? We're going to end on that one. That's a really, that's a positive email and he's absolutely right. I, most of those slides, by the way, 90% of those slides, I have nothing to do with. They are just, have been sent to me by listeners over the last couple of years and it, it just gets growing and growing and growing. I try to make sure they're, they're tasteful. They're not super insulting and don't get me in trouble with YouTube. And they've been great because they have a lot of information on them and uh, special thanks to DITRH who sent me a ton of those things from his coffee table book on Flat Earth, which I, which I love. I think it's great. So and thank you for anybody who has sent me an email so far. And remember, if you want me to read your email here, I will do so. The email address is msargent23 at comcast.net. And until next time, guys, stay flat.